other environmentally interesting targets uh, of opportunity during the uh, day passes. Typically when the orbiter is uh, on the dark side of the Earth, as it is now, at least for the next uh, five to six minutes, the low light level uh, black and white cameras uh, are much better at uh, observing the Earth surface and the star clusters as the orbiter passes uh, high overhead. When the orbiter moves within uh, a daylight pass, the color cameras in the payload bay are used to uh, get uh, more interesting sights uh, on the day side of the Earth. Looks like you got an object right in front of you, Mark. Can you look out there? I'm not sure what you're talking about. Never mind. Are we missing something? I don't see anything. Yeah, we think the uh, camera filter came off the mark. We catch a glimpse of the Russian space station Mir as it performs an on-orbit burn. Though it will be difficult to uh, pick Mir out from the stars as they pass behind us, the uh, payload bay cameras are positioned such that they're looking straight back, back, straight back behind the orbiter where the Mir is flying at about 850 nautical miles behind us. Thank you, sir. We could not see it here either. We'll wait two or three more minutes till sunrise, and then uh, at that time give you a go for KU Stowe. We're to mission lapse, time of seven days, 13 hours, and 17 minutes. This is Mission Control, Houston. The uh, Mir space station is now visible on the uh, far left-hand side of the screen, about about an inch from the bottom of this particular picture. Okay, the Mir space station is the small flashing light in the center, about an inch from. Charlie on a monitor. The uh, left hand here. side of the screen. It's slowly. Got a hell on the camera. Um, it is slowly moving closer to the left hand side and is a very, has a very light flashing to it. We think on the middle of the screen, way to the left hand side. We think you can see a flashing light just a little bit to the left of the center of the screen, very faint. Yeah, we do see something flashing visually, but we're not sure that that might be... Uh this is Mission Control Houston. Once again, we believe we were just able to spot the Mir spacecraft as it flies about at 850 nautical miles behind the sky.
Columbia and the satellite now 77 nautical miles apart. Again, that call reporting that you can see the tether and uh, see the satellite. To, that it's beautiful. This view uh, showing. Uh, Eighty-one nautical miles now from Columbia. Franklin, uh, we see a long line, a couple of star-like things, and a lot of things swimming in the foreground. Can you describe what you're seeing? Well, the long line is uh, is a tether, um, and uh, there's a little bit of debris that uh, kind of flies with us, and uh, it's uh, illuminated by the sun at such low angles. So this is just a lot of stray light. And it's getting washed out uh, quickly, but uh, Quad is trying to do a, a quick, uh, good job here adjusting the cameras. Copy that. You know that description by the crew. This is uh, the tether in the satellite. Uh, the satellite with 12, approximately 12 miles of tether still attached to it. Columbia and the satellite are now just passing over the west coast of uh, northern Africa. The two spacecraft are now 90 nautical miles apart. Controllers for the satellite uh, did have communications uh, with it uh, during the close pass uh, between Columbia and the satellite. Columbia Houston, that's a much better view, uh, a lot more contrast visible. And how wide uh, does that tether appear to be? We, we, it seems to resemble a, a much wider strand than we'd expect. Can you describe which way the, uh, the satellite is visible on that uh, strand? Satellite uh, now 100 nautical miles. Charlie, completely unzoomed, and uh, you see the full extent of the pattern.
Thank you.